down with OTC. Welcome to On The Chain Live. This is Chip. You're probably wondering where Jeff is. Jeff is not going to be making it tonight. Jeff had some previous things going on, and it's a really big night. And he was really bummed because he really wanted to be here. He's like, but man, it's probably going to hit a dollar while we're streaming. And I said, yeah, it's possible it could do that. Tonight is all about XRP. We're going to talk about some other things, too. There's some stuff going on with Bitcoin, as usual. Um, some NFT stuff that I found pretty interesting. You might want to take a closer look at. Some funny stuff, not so funny stuff. And then we are going to talk about, oh yeah, XRP. And it all starts right now. Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain with Jeff and Chip. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, or whatever part of the world you're in. Guys, drop where you are from, city and country, in the chat, because I will be putting them up as we start warming up. we got to warm up to this, because today's been a crazy day. I've been, uh, there was a period of time where I just couldn't stop looking at my phone. I was like, what is it? What is it? Refresh, refresh. And I think CoinGecko was getting hit so often that it would like time out. I'd be like, oh, no, it timed out. I'd be restarting my app. I'd be going crazy all day today. And then there was a time where I was like, I don't want to know the price. Why don't I want to know the price? Because I don't want retesting. I don't want it to retest a lower one. And then I just logged down again. I'm like, I haven't looked at it in an hour. And I see that at the time we're doing this, it's still 90. I'm like, this is really phenomenal news, right? So the fact that it's still hanging in there, I was like really thinking we were going to hit a dollar. And in the U.S., it's still possible. We have uh, four hours left here. 
it's very possible it may happen, uh, I don't know, in the next six, eight hours, but I like where we're going. Blockchain backer, I think he called for 118, if I'm not mistaken. So he's usually pretty damn straight on the money. And he called this too. So it's we're just going to have to see what happens. But um, as we go through, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, all right, Columbia, nice in the house. What's going on, Diego? How are you doing, San Diego? Pittsburgh, the Berg is in the house. I went to school there. We got some people from Orlando. Uh, Martin from uh, Seville, Spain, beautiful. I love Spain a lot. It's really cool. We just found out our friends are going to be uh, moving over there. So it's like, hey, I think we'll need an excuse to go see them, right? Lancaster PA. So we got a bunch of different stuff in here and I'll just keep flashing them up on the screen as we go into this and we uh, we get a little bit a little bit further into it. But there's a lot of cool stuff going on. I mean, it's what a you know, when you wake up on Monday morning, at least in the US here, when you wake up to green, especially XRP green, it's like the best feeling ever. And it was funny because I was actually talking to a colleague of mine. We hadn't really chatted about crypto in a while, but I had like pinged him on on um on slack on the old slacker so I, I gave him an old little ping there and i was like hey man do you are you checking out xrp and he told me that he got out i was like oh he said no i got out of crypto a while ago and i was like ee, ooh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah i thought that was kind of uh kind of was like okay so uh, it's like one of those things where you like tiptoe away you know you know like you don't you don't how do you follow that up like what are we doing what do we do after that and a couple of other colleagues of mine, and uh, we had talked a little bit about some stuff too. Cleveland rocks in the house. What's going on? Uh, Newcastle, Australia. We got a lot of friends. That, yeah, a lot of Aussie friends. So uh, yeah, blockchain backer and his live stream said the ninety was a crucial closing there. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't get a chance to watch that, but it is crucial. So that ninety cent mark right there, uh, icon upon. Been checking every five seconds. It's kind of hard not to. Because it's so it's so damn exciting to be able to look at what it is. Jeff is actually Jeff had something pre-scheduled before this some time ago. Yeah, you asking where's uh, where's Jeff? Tony Fisk asking where Jeff is. Yeah, he's um he's not here tonight. There he's gonna go, but he's uh, he will be back tomorrow evening. He was gonna try to make it, but knowing what he's doing, I'm like, you know what? Just uh, just let's don't worry about it, man. Wait a minute, ninety one cents. Blaze is saying hello, hello. Texas. That's where my bro brother lives uh, down in Texas. By the way, I am going to a wedding there, which is pretty cool. Pretty exciting about that. Um, what's going on to keep Chip on topic of Jeff in here? That's a good point, but I'm going to stay on topic because we have a lot of stuff to. Well, I've already been a minute. I've been off topic, so there you go. What are you going to? What are you going to say to that? But let's start jumping into a little bit here, guys. If my screen screen sharing gets wonky, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hopefully it's going to be okay. But let's try this. I, I still got some issues. So let's try it. If it does, I'm going to try to bat bounce out of there. And we'll, you, as long as you guys can hear me, we're in good shape. But look at this. XRP price seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I like the way they phrase that, the light at the end of the tunnel, as if they never expected it to see the light, right? Um, XRP. But if you look at some of the uh, pull quotes here that they have here, <clears throat> they just try to make that bigger. And this because this article is so wide across here. It says XRP P price has rallied 60% over the last two weeks. Think about that. 60%. SEC grants Ripple's motion to temporarily seal four documents. We know about that. First Fibonacci retracement level, the 2018-2020 bear market is in play. They go on to say that. Uh, you know, they of course they bring up the court case first, right? Ripple defense is making incremental progress. Nothing's happened in this case yet, right? So, I mean, they talk about another step forward. Well, look, I mean, you know, they wanted to redact some of the personal information of Chris Larson, and the SEC is like, no, but it'll be interesting to see whether they, they actually redact it or not, because what does this personal financial information really have to do with the core of the case? Start to sound, smell and look a little personal at that point, right? So here in this article, they say it needs a weekly close above 80 to um, leave legal worries behind. I, I don't even know where, what that's based in. I don't think it's based in reality. Ripples up 38% on the day, shattering the resistance at 80, tagging the uh, 0.236 Fibonacci retracement level. So they get into a little bit of that. Also, too, here's one. XRP pushes total cryptocurrency market value to $2 trillion. Now, I like the way this one's going, right? What pushed it up there? Was it Bitcoin? No. Was it Ether? Mm -mm. 
How about Tether? Nope. It was XRP. It was XRP that pushes it. So, wow, a nice positive headline. XRP pushes total cryptocurrency market value. Now, it wasn't too long ago that we were talking here. We were actually talking about, we were going on and on about the whole fact that we just hit $1 trillion. You guys remember we hit the $1 trillion market cap? And it was like, oh, party, break out the champagne, $1 trillion market cap. And now, bam, just like that, we're at the $2 trillion mark. So also, it reached a 1,065-day high. And if you guys were here 1,065 days ago, congratulations. Also, congratulations if you held on that entire time because you're a hodler, right? And congratulations to those who, you know, even if you took some profits, I get that. That's fine. That's up to you. That's your judgment call. Um yeah, almost 35 months. Man, that's a long time. That's day in and day in out of looking at crypto, witnessing crypto, thinking about what it's going to be. And it's like every single day of every hour. Can you imagine 35 months have gone by? Holy cannolis. That's incredible. So there, that's what everyone's phone looked like today. I was like, yeah, you're looking at your phone. And I was like, it was like nonstop. It was like refresh, refresh, refresh. So you guys will keep me posted on price as we go along here. It says uh, Ripple affiliated is catching up with the broader cryptocurrency rally. Earlier today, it soared over 38% to reach 87. Now it's 91, if I understand correctly. On the Bitstamp exchange, it's highest level since May 6, 2018. Holy cow, that's a long time. We're going almost on three years there, right? Let me just get rid of this. Uh, got some little thing going on here. Let's see. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Uh, Okay, look at this stat right here. XRP currently up 280% year to date. And everyone's like, oh, crypto, you know, it doesn't do anything. And XRP, man, it never goes anywhere. As a matter of fact, I was on a live stream somebody else um, today, and he brought up XRP. It wasn't a crypto person. It was somebody who's into crypto, but they're not exclusively crypto. He's going on about XRP, and he's like, yeah, man, XRP is like going crazy right now. I don't know what's going on with it. And then in the chat, somebody said, what about XRP? Do you like? He goes, oh, no, I don't like that. That's that's a trash coin. And then I started asking questions like, well, what do you like about it? And it was the same old stuff, you know, the same stuff we've heard a million times. You know, it's a it's a centralized coin. I'm like, oh, no, it's decentralized. And I started explaining to him. And he started reading some of the uh, the comments that I was making. And it kind of got off the subject and onto some other coin. But, again, people are really stuck with these narratives out there. You know, the, the Bitcoin is bad. And it's used for nefarious purposes. And everybody who owns Bitcoin is probably doing something bad with it, right? These things seem to linger almost forever. But you know what changes that? You know what changes hearts and minds? Price increase 280% year to date in spite of pretty much every cryptocurrency exchange delisting it. Think about that. Every cryptocurrency exchange is pretty much delisted it. So I had a, a Facebook friend uh, reach out to me today, uh, ping me on Messenger and said, hey, Jip, where do I where do I buy this? I see the price is starting to go. I, I want to get in on it. So I can't, but why can't I buy it at um, Coinbase? And I was like, well, Coinbase suspended trading right now, but go to Uphold, you know, go to Uphold, go to Bitru. You know, this is, oh, I'm sorry, you can't even buy it at Bitru. I said, go to Uphold. What was the other one I said? I think it was just Uphold. Go to buy it at Uphold because you have to be out from outside the country to buy there. So that's pretty almost place that I know you can buy and it might be one other exchange and it was like yeah yeah thanks okay I'm going to do that so according to coin market cap data to token now surpassed Cardano becoming the sixth largest but I think they're kind of like maybe you guys can confirm in a chat I think they're sort of still kind of going neck and neck I can pull it up on my phone I don't dare pull it up on my screen here because you know you guys know what could potentially happen we don't want any of that stuff right yeah, I just liked one of Doc Collins' uh, tweets over there. She said, 17, if I'm going to paraphrase but she said, I guess 17 cent XRP is gone, right? I think you're right, Doc. I think it is gone forever. I just liked that tweet. I was just uh, browsing out there and I saw that tweet of yours. And it does look like it has overtaken Cardano. We got a 41, uh, 41 41.6 billion to now 38 for <clears throat> for ADA. So that's pretty much cool. Oh, yeah, KuCoin does as well. Yeah, KuCoin. Does appreciate that. El Haco, appreciate that. KuCoin allows it as well. So it's pretty interesting. Um, we should see, you know, and um, I believe it was Lionel that pointed out in 2018 where XRP for a little bit of time touched the number one position. And he was saying that he thinks it can do it again. I'd love to see that. Um, 
we'd have to see what'll what'll happen. I know Bitcoin was dancing around the 60k mark. I don't know if it hit it. I don't know where we are on that whole thing, but but here let's go to another one. So this one here from our other favorite Coin Telegraph, which they can be sometimes a little bit shady here and there, but XRP price surges 55% to a three-year high amid the push for financial inclusivity. New cross-border payments acquisition and a renewed push to increase global financial inclusivity triggered a 55% rally in XRP price. Now, that's funny because, you know, this morning I was talking to my wife and she's like, you know, what triggered this? And I was like, you know, I don't really know what triggered it, but I do know that if you follow certain people on Twitter, they've been calling for this for a long time, especially one Baba Cogs. He's been calling for this, I want to say, since last July. Blockchain backers also made some solid predictions as far as the where it would go after the retesting and bring it up. You have a lot of people that were kind of looking at this thing and from multiple angles, right? So the price of XRP saw a 55% breakout over the past two days in the sixth ranked cryptocurrency by market capitalization. Renewed its focus on the creation of the cross-border payment network that is inclusive. So that that acquisition, I do think, although that happened last week, I saw that Ripple, I think they put a tweet out today or maybe it was yesterday. And they said, like, in case you missed it, like, hello, everybody, like waving flags. Like, in case you missed it, we just made a 40% um, sort of a uh, investment in a... Oh, gosh, I don't even know what you want to call it. I can't even think of the name of it right now. We'll get into that a little bit. But anyway, so data from Cointelegraph Markets and TradingView shows XRP dropped to a low of, of uh, 0.56 in the early hours of April 4th before a wave of trading value helped its price to a high of 87 with uh, 87 cents within the last few hours. Uptick in trading was sparked after Ripple posted a blog titled Creating a More Financially Inclusive and Sustainable Future. Now, Yes, they did They did post that, but that was an older post from, I believe, September. And I don't know that we can necessarily draw that conclusion, right? It's like, well, you know, um, somebody, po anybody could have posted anything at a certain time. And they go like, well, that must be the reason. Well, I don't necessarily know if that's it. Um, it discussed how the project partnered with mission-driven financial technology companies, universities, NGOs, foundations. Second wave of buy-in took place on April 5th at the Ripple posted the following announcement. But again, I don't know that volume really increased. You'd have to really break it down and see, but this is it. We've, we've announced their acquisition of 40% stake in the cross-border payment specialist, Tranglo. Uh, details on our recent announcement here. Now, I think this is big because Tranglo is, ha has a really good opportunity to really make some pretty big plays, right? And the fact that this comes on the sort of on the heels of the big breakup between Ripple and MoneyGram, you know, and MoneyGram was kind of like reeling a little bit saying, hey, we don't have anybody that can replace this right now. Who's going to replace this? So and a lot of people were thrown in, well, what about XLM? You know, what about Stellar? And what about this? And what about, yeah, okay, they could potentially replace it. But the problem is they don't have the rails built, right? A lot of people forget that you have to have an existing infrastructure. It's not just like somebody sending it from their from their wallet on their phone to another wallet on their phone. It just doesn't work that way. So, you know, a lot of the other potential replacements that could easily fill, I want to say easily, but could fulfill that on, let's say, MoneyGram, you know, since they're no longer working with the company Ripple, which means they're no longer going to use XRP, you could still have some other potential players out there, even... Um, Hedera Hashgraph that could potentially be a partner. But again, you have to have the infrastructure set up. You got to have the API set up. You got to have, you got to be able to connect it in such a way that you'll you'll have a, you know, a highway set up, not just like, a, you know, onesies and twosies. That's really not going to necessarily cut it. So that's one of the things that you have to um, sort of think about in this whole thing. Want to throw this up, Sesh. Appreciate that. Sesh, Lord Ricky, $1 incoming. Also, good afternoon from Ohio. Well, good afternoon, from southern florida this is the southern flank down here we are you know jeff and i keep all things real down here it's always great to talk to you know someone from the northern part i grew up in that part of the world so uh you know i i know it pretty well but thank you for that session lord ricky much appreciated still a good buy yeah so xrp verino says it's still a good buy for under a dollar and you're absolutely right because this is so funny that a lot of people are getting into XRP. They're like, oh my gosh, there's price movement. And then they go ahead and they FOMO in, right? 
that fear of missing out. Like, I've got to get in. I've got to jump in right now. But why didn't they jump in at 17 cents, right? And a lot of people might say, well, you know, this whole SEC thing. Yeah, I know a lot of people that got out and unfortunately, you know, couldn't get in quick enough. I, we always talked about it, that it would happen. You know, blockchain backers talked about it as well. as about when the price starts going up, you know, and not to say that it might not retest something at a, at a lower um, price, but again, you have to sort of look at that. Thank you for that, Connie. Please hit the, the like and the subscribe with that bell notifier because that's the one that actually sets you that little that little message on your phone that stuff's coming. What's up, D Moons? How are you doing? Three billion more MC than eighty-eight. That Rose says right there. Yeah, so I'm just looking through some of the comments right here. Uh, Four twenty-five. Yeah, thank you for that, John Doe. Appreciate that as well. Four twenty-five in the chat, guys. Hit that like button, that subscribe button. That like helps our algorithm. The reason we remind you guys, and it's super annoying because I hate when other YouTubers do it. They're like, "Don't forget to smash the like and the subscribe," you know. And you're like. The thing about it is, though, is that it really has a factor on how fast our channel grows. Like, for example, we grew incredibly fast in January. February is a pretty decent month. March, eh. April is not off to a great start, but it's getting a lot better. Just, we review the stats. We look at them. But really, the like ratio to how many people watch to actually like it or even throw comments in there. And I'm talking about comments on the rewatch. So a lot of people don't watch this live. A lot of people watch it after. And when you're watching it after the fact, so that's why we're that's why we're so incessant about like, oh, we got it. It's only because of that, because it helps the channel. And I know you guys enjoy the channel and you guys want to do that. Um, and uh, Ani uh, Brito says, hey, hello, late to the party. You're never late to the party, man. The party is just getting started. Yeah, we're going to get into sparkles, too. That's one of the things on the agenda. That's what I want to talk about, the NFT stuff. I put a tweet out earlier talking about that, and we will get to that as well. So, yeah, I want to get into that sparkles thing. Now, let's take a look at this. Let's continue to go through here. I pulled a lot of news tonight. I want to go through it. Crypto economy nears $2 trillion. XRP gains 37%. Bitcoin dominance drops to 56%. What? Is that a headline? How about that? XRP gains 37%. Bitcoin dominance drops to 56%. There's all kinds of really great little news articles. It's like, it was like, not only a great day to be checking price, but just to be like, you know, running through all these news articles. Digital currency markets have seen some significant gains on Monday as the entire market capitalization of all 8,500 plus cryptocurrencies in existence jumped a few percentages. So we always talk about why it's really healthy to have a, a crypto market that can that, that can all work together. Like, you know, we don't want to be maximalist. Yeah, pick your favorites. You know, you have your favorite sports team, your favorite your musicians, or you had your all-time favorite band, and there's like second favorite and fourth. But again, it's all about love and the ecosystem. And we always talk about a rising tide floats all boats. That tide comes in and floats everybody. Everybody gets to win a little bit. And a healthy ecosystem in, in digital assets is the best thing. And it's really kind to a lot of people. It's kind to everybody. People are coming in. Remember, there's new people coming in every single day. And this is something that is, you know, it's just incredibly remarkable. I want to jump back into this here. Um, crypto assets have seen their values jump northbound on Monday as the entire crypto economy spiked 3%. So think about that. 3% across the board during the morning training sessions. Bitcoin rose by 1.9%, and during the last seven days, it's gained 2.3%. So you look at some of these, some of the altcoins and what they've been able to do. You know, we saw, we see XDC rising too, breaking that five, five cent mark as well. So there's a lot of stuff. You know, we got VeChain, a lot of stuff. I saw BitTorrent um, had like a 2X overnight, really literally overnight. So that's, that's already knocking on the door. So there's a lot of cool stuff that's happening. Um, Binance coin, 8% gain in 24 hours. You had BNB was trading for 300, it's almost $375. That still is, is crazy. When I see that, I'm still like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is still an insane sort of a thing for me. And let me look at else, what else we have here. Uh, Ripple part. Okay. So yeah, I want to talk about this a little bit too. Ripple partners. So it's a lot of XRP Ripple related news tonight, which is exciting. Ripple partner Mer Mercury Effects accepted into the first cohort of a South African regulatory sandbox. 
gosh, more exciting news, please. South Africa's Intergovernmental FinTech Working Group, known as the IFWG, recently accepted Mercury FX, which is a Ripple partner, a UK-based e-money firm, into its first cohort of its regulatory sandbox. The firm, which harnesses the RippleNet blockchain, says it wants to demonstrate its technology ability to shorten the money transfer window to only minutes. Look at what's happening. What is going on? I mean, there's something special that's happening. Here we are, we get into Q2, we start seeing a lot of like things rolling along and happening. The other thing we see too is that there's a lot of fear of inflation out there, right? People are like, and a lot of governments are like, oh, there's some inflation. You know, the uh, it's funny because the central bankers are coming out. No, no, we're, we're going to tap down inflation. Well, it's there because you get the packages are getting smaller. The things cost more money, right? It's it, it's they're not publishing like, well, inflation's up 2% or 1.5%. But what's happening universally is that people all over the globe, we're all coming together and we're saying, hey, what if I take a hundred bucks and, and and put it in XRP and XRP was 30 cents and they saw that they, they saw that triple right you take 30 a hundred bucks and all of a sudden now you have three hundred dollars that same hundred dollars sitting in a bank is is losing value every single day so I think there's also another thing at play here is a worldwide um, sort of an awakening if you will people are looking at digital assets a little bit different right becoming a little bit more accepting and I really credit a lot of that to like Bitcoin because when when you saw all these corporations go in head first, right? They just jumped in head first in the shallow end, didn't care. And now it's said, sort of almost made it more acceptable. Jump back into this further Mercury effects, which claims to have piloted the use of this technology in the Philippines, claims it has. And Mexico says its solution, aided by the XRP token, will enable low cost cross border remittances. In addition to Ripple, the firm also reveals it will be partnering with Valor, a local crypto exchange towards this objective. So now what you start seeing is there you've got a partnership with the South African exchange. It's a local exchange. And I always love how they write this stuff. They claim. Oh, it's a wild claim. They claim to be doing this already. Pff, everyone knows it's not possible. I mean, it's almost like they write it from that perspective. And this is, can this possible? Pff, Oh, no, of course it's possible. Um, so, however, according to a statement issued by the IFWG, Mercury Effects' acceptance in the sandbox, let me throw that back up, does not indicate a change in a firm's licensing status or signal tacit or implicit approval of the product or service. Now, of course, you guys know this is all, this is the disclaimer, right? They're going to say, by the way, it wasn't officially accepted and it's don't take it as an endorsement. Uh, it doesn't mean that their test run of its service will be subject to certain limits prescribed by the relevant authorities. You know, that was lawyered up right there, that statement, because that doesn't even read friendly at all. Also, the testing will be in the main, will mainly be done in terms of the South African exchange and control regulations. But um, it also shares details of the working parameters, which Mercury effects will adhere to. Well, of course they will, because they obviously want to. So here's the statement. Mercury is testing. Mercury effects is testing the regulatory treatment and associated regulatory reporting implications, obligations, blah, 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 being of used for affecting low value cross. So that's the official statement, but it's everything we just talked about um, right there. So yeah, it's, it's all, it's all good stuff. So um, what else we have that? So I, I kind of wanted, I wanted to jump off a little bit here. I want to jump into a John Deaton tweet that, um, that actually I believe this went out yesterday, but I think this is interesting. So, Obviously, you know, John Deaton is our warrior, um, you know, uh, attorney who's really been representing the XRP community. And I still say the crypto community at large because this is not just uh, a complaint against Ripple. This has long reaching effects potentially into the old crypto ecosystem. So he says he's obtained all public. Now, he put this out on March 22nd and he's, he's commenting on this tweet saying that he's obtained all publicly available information that he can on Hinman. Hinman is the one who had from the SEC who basically said that, you know, um, in a Yahoo conference that Bitcoin nor Ethereum were securities. He says, while Hinman was at the SEC and after he gave his Bitcoin Ethereum speech, his firm, now this is an attorney firm that he never really left, um, represented Kanan in its IPO. Kanan is the second largest Chinese manufacturer um of and i don't recall what the manufacturer the bottom line was he received here we go let's go to this 
So he's posing a question here. Does China and or Alipay have any interest related to Ripple or XRP? And I think it's a really good question. Asking for a friend, right? Putting a question out there, not being at all um, one way or the other, but he's saying, does China or Alipay have any interest related to Ripple or XRP? Previously tweeted about Clayton and him and being at the SEC. They were on the SEC application for Alibaba's IPO. So the same two people who were on the application for Alibaba, a you know a company based in China, they were a part of their initial um, their uh, their IPO. So now let's look into another lawyer who appears on that SEC filing. This is someone known as Liming Chen. So Liming Chen, like him, and was a partner at Simpson Thatcher. Liming Chen also, and I'm probably screwing that name up served in the firm's Hong Kong office, focusing on SEC registered offerings. A client of Simpson Thatcher is someone called Neil Shen. Neil Shen is the founding and managing partner of Sequoia China. Huh, how about that? So here he's putting some uh, information there. You can see it right there. You can see that the, it's on there. Now, Neil Shen put forth at the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, say that's six times fast, the recommended that Recommendation that Hong Kong create its own stablecoin, which can be used for cross-border payments between China, Japan, and South Korea. Did you guys catch that? Cross-border payments between China, Japan, and South Korea. Huh, interesting. Now, by the way, Lemming Chen must, must have impressed those at Alibaba and in China because he's no longer at Simpson Thatcher. He's now the vice president at Alipay. More on Hinman's partner in crime at the SEC and Jay Clayton later. So these are some important questions he's posing. You see, this is one of the things we talk about. Jeff and I talk about this all the time. Follow the money. Don't worry about what people are saying. They're saying this or doing this. A lot of it's a distraction. The bottom line is you got to follow where the money's going. Where's the money going? And they say like, oh, we really want to save the planet. That's awesome. I think we all would, I think the, everybody in the globe would say, let's save the planet. Let's do the best we can to treat her, him, whatever. I don't know, genderless planet, right. And then you start looking at the money. Start following the money a little bit. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 what is this organization? Wait, what political figures are tied to that? And what other offshoots of that? Now, if you start digging deep enough and you dive deep enough, you start noticing all these sort of tentacles are all sort of conjoined and they're all sort of mixed up. This is exactly what Deaton's getting at right here, which I love this because he's uncovering this stuff, man. And um, anyway, we'll have to keep a really close, uh, we'll have to keep a close eye on that because I think there's a lot more that's probably potentially going to come out about this. Let's see. We'll have to see what happens in here. Annalise, good to see you in here. Hey, she's following the money. She's following her money, right? Following her, right? And everyone's following their money right now. But when I say follow the money, I talk about ties to illicit things. They're always like, a big, you Bitcoiners, man, you're always doing that nefarious stuff. Well, meanwhile, Look at all the nefarious stuff that's done with cold hard currency, fiat currency, right? All of these things. I'll give you a good example. In the U.S., we just had something called, uh, they just, Congress passed something, not called the Token Taxonomy Act. That would have been amazing. No, but they, they passed um, a stimulus bill, right? A stimulus, signed it into law. President signed it. 9% went to the people. 91% went to other, other things, other money trails, all that stuff. Now they have a new one that they're working up, which is now going to be called the infrastructure bill, you know, update airports. If you ever fly in the US, we got some of the worst airports. I mean, I've been in smaller countries. They've got beautiful airports. We've got some of the most wretched, rundown, horrible, especially if you're in New York. I mean, JFK, LaGuardia, it's just a mess out there, man. It's it's just, it's like a third world country. I mean, our airports. So we're, we're, there's going to be a $4 trillion um, st stimulus and guess how much is going to fix the roads, the bridge? You know how many roads and bridges we have in the U.S.? You know how much territory that covers? I mean, it's incredible. You know how many airports we have? Well, 5% is going to go to that. And the other 95% is going to go to pet projects, right? Mostly green um, green um, energy deals and stuff like that. But then you don't know where that money is dispersed. That's why we got to get all this in the blockchain. We get all this on the blockchain. We're checking everything. Now, check this out. Germany... 
Hang on a second. Germany, Germany, uh, federal bank tests a blockchain payment system sans the CBDC. So the Deutsche uh, um, Bundles Bank in Germany has successfully tasted a, tested a blockchain based settlement interface for electronic securities. The test bridges the gap between mainstream finance and blockchain technology without relying on a central bank digital currency. Huh, isn't that interesting? Let me see if I understand that. So it bridges, huh, bridges the gap between mainstream finance, uh-huh, and blockchain technology without relying on a central bank digital currency. And this is great news, actually, because I think the CBDCs are just another excuse for all of these um, central banks to just print more, you know, more currency, right? They're just like going to have an excuse to let, let's go mint this now and let's go create these. So developed in partnership with Deutsche Börse Group and the German finance agency, the test demonstrates the platform relies on two software modules, which connect the existing payment system with the digital ledger technology to demonstrate. It sounds as if they were like trying to describe basically Ripple, um, the XRPL and XRP without using the word, right? Because it's almost, and, and I really don't know what they're using here. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, um, assert that that's what they're using but it's as if you're if you ever played that game there's a game out there where they give you they go describe this item but here's five things you can't say and all you want to say are those five things um and this silly like it's like, a, it's like a board game like interactive fun game you play like a party or something like that and they're saying to demonstrate the technology the test issued a 10-year government bond using dlt with the trading its primary and secondary markets settled in the same system Test then developed a trigger signal that connected the DLT with the current payment system, confirming a transaction had taken place. Platform then allowed the Bundles Bank to be to benefit from the strength of the blockchain tech without the need to overhaul their currency. Interesting. Germany's economy is the largest in the Eurozone. Therefore, it's of high significance that the Bundles Bank has been among strong opponents of CBDCs. And why... And of course, they would be a strong opponent of that. It just makes sense. Everybody should be a strong opponent. Um, let's not confuse CBDCs, a central bank digital currency, really with blockchain. Blockchain is open, transparent, right? Blockchain, at least, I mean, there are there are private blockchains, but there, I don't see a CBDC offering any value, especially in the adoption. It's a central bank doing what they do best, centralized control. It's centralized control. It's exactly what they're doing, right? They're controlling um, everything that happens. And the worst part of it is it's centralized. So don't get, um, they could be using quant. Yeah, they very well could be using quant, Martin. That's a good, good, that's a good guess right there. And I saw somebody tweeting negatively about quant today. I would, quant is like, uh, that's, that's a really good, um, good thought process right there. I don't think they name it in this article. No, I think it's sort of a, let me look in through here. So we tested, bank. no, they don't really get into what it is, but but they're floating it out there, right? They're putting it out there. They're, they're getting it out there to to the masses, so to speak. They want to make sure that it's, uh, that it certainly is um, news, right? So they're, they're, they want people to know that they are experimenting. They also got the little dig in there that we're not really down with the whole CBDC thing, man. We don't care about CBDCs, right? So they're not so down on the whole CBDC. And, you know, there's so much talk about NFTs. So I think there's something else that's good that's coming. And I'll tie this in. There's a couple of stories I want to take you guys through because I think they're interesting. They're, they're different perspectives on this whole non-fungible tokens, which are better known as NFTs, right? And, you know, there's been a craze lately. Everyone's been going mad. Everyone's going crazy with the whole, oh, my God, the NFTs, you know, I can't get enough. So first, we'll start out with sort of a, what do they call it a negative take on it? But the highest valued living painter, David Hockney, NFTs are for crooks and swindlers, right? David Hockney, the highest valued living painter, describes Beeple's NFT art as silly little things. Now, David Hockney is revered in the art world, right? Because he because he has sold some um, paintings for a lot of a lot of money, right? And into the multi multi millions, and he is currently the the highest valued living painter right now. But I thought this was an interesting article for several reasons because it's important to know how legacy thinks about this new technology, right? We always tie things back to the things that we know. Now, this is one of his paintings right here. This was portrait of an artist pool with two figures. Now we'll talk about this in a little bit, 
but this is one of his paintings right here. There it is right there. Now, a funny thing is, could be made into an NFT. I'm going to get into, yeah, so the sale of Beeple's, uh, Mike Winkleman is his real name, artwork for $69.3 million last month, made Beeple the third most valuable living artist. you imagine that? The third most valuable living artist behind only Jeff Koons and David Hockney. Now, Hockney holds the record for the highest sale of work by a living artist. He's no fan of NFTs. He thinks it's an ICS. He says when asked about the phenomenon, international crooks and swindlers. Hockney said he read about NFTs, but he's not interested. So here we go. He's he's read about them. I read all about NFTs. No interest, right? So that kind of leads me to believe he doesn't really. He says, what are they really owning? I don't know. He said on yesterday's episode of Waldy and Bendy's Adventures in Art. Wow, what a title that is, huh? Uh, that'd be like Chippy and Jeff's Chippers and Jeff's uh, a foray into uh, NFTs. An art podcast hosted by Waldemar um, Genesic, art critic of the Sunday Times. Um, but, but, but Hockney is 83 years old. He said he couldn't care less about NFTs. I'm not looking for money. He shrugged. Understandably, Hockney's best known artwork, which we just looked at, the portrait of an artist, sold in 2018 at auction for $90 million. Yeah, that's right. This right here sold for $90 million. Yeah. So, yeah, I understand his statement. He's not looking for money, but it wouldn't it be interesting if Hockney made this painting an NFT and sold it for $91 million. I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm throwing it out there. I wonder if he might think differently of any. So, what do you own? Well, you basically own the digital representation on the blockchain. Now, for someone that doesn't understand blockchain, where it is permanent and cannot be messed with, you can't, it's it's indelible. You can't you can't change it. He doesn't think they make sense at all. Things get lost in the computer, can't they? See, he he's comparing it to what he knows. Uh, a JPEG image that you would it's that's on the blockchain. You don't lose it on the blockchain. He says that they will be in the future lost on the computer, even when the cloud gets going. There's gonna be so much. How do you find it? So Again, someone, I, I thought this was kind of funny. Um, it's an interesting take, you know, and I have a lot of respect for Hockney. I love his work. I think he's a, a brilliant guy. But again, he's comparing it to something he knows. Hockney's no fan of newcomer Beeple. Beeple's every day is the first 5,000 days, which sold for $70 million, or so roughly $70 million. He said, I saw the pictures, but I mean, it just looked like, like silly little things. I couldn't make out what it was, actually. Now, if he had done a deep dive in this, I think he would have been blown away it looks like silly things because you can't really see it, but I think he would have been blown away um, for the, for all the stuff that he actually had written. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of interesting takes on this, and then I want to share this other one with you because here's somebody else's take. Another interesting thing to think about: silent crash as price floors collapse across the NFT space. Prices are plummeting, and some holders may not even know it. So first thing I saw that article, I thought I was very intrigued when they said prices are plummeting, but some holders might not know it. The first thing I thought was, well, how would they not know it? Ah, we're going to get into that. How is it that they wouldn't know the prices were plummeting? Well, they make a good reason for that. Hey, look at me. Look at me. I got my regular traditional. Either. If prices plummet in an illiquid market, how soon before anyone notices? While fungible tokens traded on centralized and decentralized exchanges, they have significant transparency regarding price movements. The NFTs can be harder to track because they're illiquid nature. Gauging the sentiment of the overall market for a project can be difficult. Now, this is where Hockney, his sensibilities sort of come in play here because now in the art world, in the art market, it goes back thousands of years, right? It's a very mature marketplace, and you kind of know it ebbs and flows with, with, with how – paintings move, right? So the whole art world, when collectors and what they're looking for, you kind of have an idea of sentiment, what's out there. But because, because NFTs are illiquid, you don't necessarily know that it could be dropping and the bottom could be dropping out. A dynamic that led one e-girl capital member, Mui, to dub NFTs correction as silent crashes. And she says, all oh, I like the phrasing of the crash is silent. Why? Because in liquid markets, you see the prices go down every day. In NFT land, sellers have slower market reaction. Instead of sellers adjusting prices downwards, 
every day for a month, it may just be like minus 80% overnight. Now, think about this. Let's compare NFTs to what we know a little bit about, which is the digital asset world, right? It's like, man, it's like prints or pop. It's like you're, you're flying high one day and then, oh, market correction. Oh, something happened. Oh, bad news. Whatever it could be. And the market goes and we were in such a, you know, bear cycle for the longest time. It was like, don't worry, excess Murphy moon. And you're like, it's going to go up. I know it. I just know it. I feel the gut. And then 35 months goes by and finally we get a little bit of price action. Someone else put out a tweet too that I was reading earlier and I don't recall the name. So forgive me, but it said, I know this is just temporary. I know we're going to go back down to 20 cents. I know that this is not going to last, you know? I don't blame somebody for going there, but come on, man. I mean, like, you know, it's got at some point. Um, Crypto Eddie put out a great video today, too. She talked about, finally, you remember we would, we, XRP, or let's say a lot of the altcoins would sort of move with Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up, and all of a sudden, the altcoin pops up, and Bitcoin goes, and the altcoin, well, we've decoupled, right? And I would say a lot, I would say that's true for a lot of altcoins. You had, and we had that story a little bit ago where Bitcoin lost a little bit, but you have other altcoins gaining, you know, especially stuff like VeChain and, you know, and BTT, which had a phenomenal 24 hours, right? There's a lot of stuff out there that's actually moving. So um, CryptoPunks here, this is another one I want to put up here. CryptoPunks, among the earliest, the most popular NFT projects for collectors, seen over a 40% decrease in floor price to 14 ETH, roughly about 28,000 at the time of the publication. Because so I saw ETH hit, um, I think, twenty. last time I saw it was 2100, which is amazing. It was like 1500 not too long ago, just a few weeks ago. So the price capitulation led some on-chain horror stories today, such as the one speculator who sold a punk for 16 ETH after purchasing it for 25. And another that sold today for 27 after a 42 ETH. So you're seeing that sort of big-time decrease, right? So maybe people are getting a little bit of cold. You know, look at that right there. Now, these are awesome, too. Um, I've seen this done very successfully in offices where, let's say that if you take this and you print it out and you make it big enough, you can turn every one of these into a Post-it note. You get the color of Post-it note and you put it on the wall. And now you've got your own sort of cool wall art. I've actually seen it done with, uh, with, with Super Mario. It's a really cool thing to do, right? You just put that on there and I've seen that done very well. I'll to, I, I, I just I love bit bit um, this sort of bitmapped uh imagery so this is pretty cool so that one right there yeah that one sold um bought it for 27 with about 57 grand and then sold it but you know if you but if you're also here's the other thing too that i look at with this whole thing it's been trending downward since february 22nd let's suppose you got into eth early right so let's suppose you got like thousands of eth or hundreds right you almost don't and, and, and i'm not saying that it's not but you almost don't look at it as money. It's like, well, it's 14 ETH, right? It's 10 ETH. It's 16. I got, I got 1800 of them. You know, you, you're not looking at it like it's $57,000, you know, or whatever that ends up in pounds or euros, whatever. You're not really kind of looking at it that way. So that could be giving some false promise to the marketplace as well. The market's like, oh, this is amazing, right? And that's why you're willing to sort of sell a little bit lower because you reclaim, you reclaim what you really we're into which was your ETH, right? So you grabbed your ETH back and then you got it back in your portfolio and that thing starts going up and rising, right? No harm, no foul. You're probably not going to use lose much over time anyway. So I kind of feel like I feel like that might be something that's actually going on and happening here. It's a potentially uh it's a possibility. Now let's get into some other stuff. <clears throat> and I wanted to get in someone hit it right there, talked about sparkles. This is a pretty exciting project. Um, you're like, what the hell is Sparkles, Chip? Well, I'll tell you. There it is right there, Sparkles. It's sparklesnft.com. Now, this is an exciting project. I tweeted about this earlier saying, hey, I was really looking forward to this because I've got some NFTs that I want to go ahead and put out. I want, I have a series idea that I want to put out. I've been thinking about it for a little bit of time. And so I want to work up, up, up a series. Um, same with like, like the CryptoPunk. You know, that's a series. I have an idea for a series, right? So so we have Sparkles. And you go like, okay, well, that's, uh, I don't get it. What is it? So it's Sparkles, is a community-run project to build a platform that allows you to buy, sell, and mint NFTs on the Flare network. Now, the other big complaint that everybody has has to do with 
the gas fees, right? Just getting crushed with the gas fees. Now, now, if you're going to go ahead and mint NFTs on Flare, you're talking about you're going to eliminate those fees. So what what the same potential that Flare is working towards in in the, in the whole smart contract space probably will will, will siphon off a lot of that um, business or pull it away from um, Ethereum because of the fact that the fees are so much less, right? And because Flare was brilliant when they when they conceived the project to create this ecosystem that you could build upon. So their mission and their values, they're going to create and sustain an NFT marketplace and increase the Flare Network's adoption by encouraging the community to create, mint, buy, and sell entities. And that's you, right? So I'm not saying we're going to, you know, you're, you're going to give your stash away. I see, look at Jeff saying right there, there's so much winning that we'll get sick of it. Well, never. <laughs> that's a good point, Jeff. I just saw you pop up in, in the... Uh, I know you. I know you're out and about, but um, it's so weird doing this without you. It always is, but um, but they talk about the mission to buy and sell and do that, right? So on the Flare network, I think there might be a pretty decent adoption. Now their vision was to be a decentralized, autonomous organization, which is called a DAO. Um, it's built by the community where the community has voting rights. So just like a lot of other things in the Flare network, you get voting rights. So you basically, the community, us, we will be able to vote on. Um, the direction of the future platform, which is pretty cool. So they're building on Flare Networks, solves two important tech problems, scaling issues and high fees, which we just talked about. It's also been an obstacle for other blockchains to realize the full potential of NFTs. And I wholeheartedly agree with this. You know, everything's happening over, you know, um, with Ether right now, but that's about to change as well. And it's gonna, there's other projects that are working on it too. I thought I, I, thought I saw something about Cardano as well. This was followed by an environmental problem that's heavy carbon footprint, blah, blah, blah. We'll get into all that stuff. Um, the Flare Network can integrate F assets, which can be used as payments. Current assets integrated are XRP, XLM, Doge, and Litecoin, uh, with more to be added. Now, I'm sure at some point, I'm sure at some point, hey, all, what's up? Joe's Jeff. Hey, all. I'll be your voice, Jeff. He says, hey, all. Mama Lacey says, hello. Jeff. Yeah, here's another one too. So Crypto Novice Kim says with Gala Games nodes, you can win random NFTs. You can sell them and make more money along with earning a free Gala token every day. Today I earn 95, not earn 95. That's very cool. Yeah, there's, and I like where this is going, right? I think ultimately what's happening is, is it's just huge. And I talk about the community and funding because it's not, you know, it's, I think the website launched today or yeah, maybe it was yesterday. I think it launched today. Sparkles is meant to be a platform built by the community for the community. The project is as much ours as it's yours, meaning it can only be achieved by collecting, collectively contributing to building it. The project will benefit Flare Network's ecosystem, help accelerate its adoption, get it mainstream, right? So if you learn about, hey, you can go to Sparkles. Well, well what if I buy an NFT? Or maybe they're you know, different price, or now you're getting, hey, you can use XRP, you can use XLM, you can use Litecoin, you can use Doge. Another use case for Doge. Can use Doge to go ahead and, and you know, potentially put towards an NFT, which is pretty cool. So again, this is going to take a community. I wish they would have would have put it on this background with all these stars back there. It's kind of hard to read. Uh, they found it at March 7th. Uh, logo and roadmap will reveal the launch, expanding the team. So they're just talking about some of the things they're going to be doing. And again, I believe this is all going to be voluntary. I don't think you know people get involved. So if you guys want to get involved, there's any anybody out there who wants to get involved in this project, they welcome everyone from the community. If you're passionate, you believe you can add value to the team, then join us. We can. If you have a background in web development and smart contracts, graphic design, accounting, marketing, send us an email. Right. So that's it. So they just kind of announced the project. Um, it's a pretty exciting thing to be honest with you. I'm I'm super excited about it because the more you know. So, Everybody that's going to come in is going to come in from a different sort of a road. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you might meet some, hey, let's meet up at the city. People come in from air. Some people will take the train in. Some people will take, you know, an Uber in. Some people, there's all different roads to get to the same place. And I feel like with Flair, there's going to be that component of people that really are in the NFTs. And that's another, it's like, wait a minute, I don't have to pay these, these ridiculous gas fees. No, oh, no, you don't. And what is, oh, by the way, what is, what is this flare? Why don't, what, you know, it, it gets people learning a little bit more about what it is, what's the potential, you know, how can I, how can I build upon it? How can I learn from it? This is just some passing news, but FinCEN finally appointed 
somebody to the position. This is former chain analysis CTO as the acting director. In tapping chain analysis, former CTO FinCEN has signals is continued focus on crypto. So I think this is also another good sign here just because it is somebody from the crypto community. They hired the former uh, chief tech officer of chain analysis. Now, if you're, for, if you're hiring a CTO, you've got somebody going into a position that understands, unlike Congress, unlike a lot of government bodies and government representatives in whatever country you're from, do, have, do not have any basic understanding of this space, right? A chief tech officer, this is basically the equivalent of a David Schwartz. He's a CTO, right? So the move suggests that the agency's onboarding crypto-specific talent that tackled its renewed focus on the sector. Now, we know FinCEN has called uh, XRP a cryptocurrency, right? And they've also fined Ripple. So the government agency is responsible for monitoring money laundering and terrorist financing. Um, yeah, Michael Mosier is going to be named the acting director, follows the resignation of its former director, Kenneth Blanco. He previously worked as a deputy secretary, this is Mosier, um, in the U.S. Treasury and as a counselor to the deputy secretary. Also, digital, He was also the digital innovation officer and deputy secretary at FinCEN. He'll take on his new role on April 11th. So, again, this is good, good news for the space. You know, you're not putting some old, you know, some person that's just relevant to the space. You know, it's like, hey, old timer, you know, and they're like, hey, what is this thing, you know? They know nothing about it. You're talking about somebody very competent, understands the landscape and space, you know, much the same way that Brian Brooks, who came out, um, uh, comptroller of the OCC, who came from, he was the general counsel of Coinbase. You know, this is, it, it makes more sense. And again, the same way we're putting, we're filling these governmental positions in the United States and around the world, we ought to start thinking about having that litmus test for you know, the equivalent like of a Congress that you got to have some basic understanding. It's not enough. It used to be that if you were an attorney and you, you know, you had command or access to some money, you could go run for office and boom, you're in office. It's not enough anymore. It just isn't. Um, so we talked about high gas fees. Check this out. So Decentraland, which is a decentralized uh, game that you can play, launches a uh, DAP portal with Polygon to bypass high gas fees. So this is interesting. They're creating a use case because they want, this is exactly what Sparkle is tackling, right? With the NFT space. So they've launched an account portal where you can move Mana to Polygon. And if you guys remember Polygon, it used to be known as Matic. They changed their name not too long ago. Um, here it is, uh, but, but, uh, let's see. So it's a decentralized virtual world. They added the usability with Ethereum Layer 2 project Polygon to address gas fees that are currently plaguing Ethereum's blockchain, according to a blog post. The move comes a day after um, DeFi firm Aave sold, said it's exploring scalable side chains with Polygon. So you see what's happening. Polygon has a use case, um, a very good one at that. But I wonder if, I don't know what you guys think. Do you guys ever think that Ethereum is going to make the jump I mean, there's, we're, we've been hearing about Ethereum 2.0 for the longest time, but these fees are people are like creating side chains to work around the, the high gas fees. I think it's a little bit, it's a little bit silly and ridiculous. Now, I wanted to pull this story up. I know we're running out of time here, but I wanted to pull this up. Um, the story really is about a guy who he was a college student, an Australian college student. He turned four thousand dollars. Um, into uh, a fortune by speculating on the blockchain boom. And so one of the reasons I want to get into this because he talks a little bit, there's the dude right there. Hang on a second. Let's get rid of this. I accept. I accept. Traders uh, opt to stay anonymous, available behind an alphanumeric wallet, blah, 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 blah. So he's 30 years old. His Brisbane, Australia made a fortune not once but twice. First, he hedged bets on from 2013 to 2017. And that was really Bitcoin. Then he got into um, NFTs, right? So I'm not going to go through the whole article, but basically got a lot of grief from his parents. He was uh, he was in law school and he left law school because he was just making a crazy amount of money, right? So he got into Bitcoin because he understood the fundamentals. The fact they're only going to be 21 million. So he spent 4,000 on Bitcoin at 150 a pop. Everyone thought he was crazy, right? Uh, before long, it went up to 950 per coin, 10 time 10 xing his money. So then he paid uh, really close attention to buzz on forums with Bitcoin and alt pairs. And then, and then he bet heavily on XRP. It says Ripple in the article, 
a coin he purchased in bulk at an average price of less than 0 0.005. So he loaded up on some XRP. Of course, they call it Ripple because obviously they don't understand it. But I thought that was pretty cool and a fun little graphic at that. He bet on XRP, a coin founded in 2013 with simplifying financial transfers. And again, this is uh, the hustle. This is they do um they do a lot of good in-depth stories, not really about crypto, but they do a lot of this stuff. I mean, they do do hit it a lot. But anyway, I just want to thank everybody, man. It's gonna be an exciting week. You know, Jeff will be back tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll be doing this all week. We'll be doing it Tuesday till Thursday, but it's exciting. Just enjoy it, take it all in, breathe it in, exhale it out. Let's see what happens. Guys, if you're here in the first time, smash that like button. But more importantly, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that little bell notifier. It's kind of hidden on mobile. You got to click the subscribe and then you got to like flip up a little bit to get to that bell notifier. And then you can, you'll know when we drop new videos. It's always cool. You'll get the, uh, you'll get the notification. Um, usually 30 minutes before a stream, then you'll get it as the stream starts. We play a little timer so you can get things together. And We'll be scheduling another meetup pretty soon as well. But uh, also, too, there's some new designs that are coming to the merch store. Maybe Jeff and I will get into that tomorrow, show off some of those designs. Again, we want to test it out before we get into it. But that's pretty much all I have tonight. There's a lot I didn't get to, so maybe some of that will be overflow tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of stuff going on um, as, we, as we traverse this crazy world called cryptocurrencies. That's all I know. I'm Chip. Jeff will be back tomorrow, and I'm out of here. Have a good one. See you on the next one. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.